sometimes I wonder if I like better to work on the drones on the bench or to actually fly them. I enjoy a lot the time that I spend on the bench working with all my drones and finding the pieces and doing everything that I have to do to satisfy my customers when they send me a broken drone. And today I want to show you the tools that I have with me, my favorite tools to make this kind of work much better. I'm going to start with something that is kind of like obvious and a lot of people will say, why are you talking about this? But hear me out. Screwdriver set, a good screwdriver set for me, it's something that is a must have when you are doing this kind of bench work. And I'm not talking about having one of those 100 bits in one screwdriver. It's not a bad tool, don't, don't misunderstand me. But what I'm talking about is to have a set of screwdrivers, like these ones, where each one of them is a size because it makes your work much better. You take one of them, you just go and work, and if you need another size, you just take the other one. You don't have to be thinking about changing the, the bead and these kind of things that takes long time and it's easy to drop them, forget them, lose them, and those kind of things when, when there are so many pieces. The other thing that I have to say when it comes about the screwdrivers is that a lot of people might be tempted to have something like this, an electric screwdriver, which again, it's good, it's a tool, but it has two problems. One is the bit changing thing that I was mentioning before. If you are working with several different screws, it's a pain to be changing them. And number two, that the torque that you have on most of these screwdrivers, electric screwdrivers, it's not enough or it's not good enough for what you're doing on the bench. So again, here I'm going with the traditional screwdriver, good quality, so when you use it, it's not like after the second or the third time it's all broken and it doesn't fit anymore. So a good sc screwdriver set with different sizes, the most common sizes for FPP, is my number one in the list. The next one that I'm going to talk about is uh, PSU or a power supply for your bench and you might wonder why do you want a power supply if you have your batteries and you have them around right but here's the thing when you have a power supply you have a few things that you can do a little bit easier for example if I want to power just a receiver an express RS receiver to try and test if there is a problem just on the receiver and not the drone and not the connections to the drone I can use my power supply to just set the five volts that I need for that, connect it with some cocodrile cables, and then I power just the receiver and I can troubleshoot the receiver without having to think all the other factors that can be when you have it already installed in the drone. At the same time, there is another thing that a lot of people forget or tends to forget, and it's when you are working on a drone on the bench, many times you are testing and you're plugging in and plugging out and it takes a lot of tests and it takes a lot of time and sometimes you deplete your battery because you forget to charge it again during all these tests. You damage the battery and maybe you have to throw it away and you have a not such a good battery anymore after those kind of things. With the power supply you forget about that because you set the, vo the, the voltage that you want, you set the values that you want and it's going to be there all the time, it's never going to be depleted, it's never going to damage because you forgot to charge it or something similar. And the number three thing special about the power supply is that it has current protection. And what does this mean? It means that if for any reason you are building, you are fixing your drone and you have a short circuit somewhere, if you use the right values on the power supply, if you limit the current, for example, you are going to test the first time that you're gonna plug the, the drone after you are working on it and you just limit the current to 0.4 amps or something, then if there is a short circuit, nothing is going to break or it's gonna give you enough time so you don't break, it doesn't burn down because the power supply has a protection and it's going to stop sending current after that limit has reached. You can do that with what they call the smoke stoppers. That's the reason why they exist and there are some protection. But again, if you have the power supply to, 
to feed your drone with the with the power with the voltage that you have and at the same time it's doing that work you don't need that smoke stopper that we were talking about it's a little bit convenient again if you work a lot on your drones on the bench there is almost no way that you get out of fpv or you get into fpv and you don't need to solder at some point you're gonna break something in your drone and you're gonna need to re-solder a cable or two or three or even more and again if you enjoy this building you have to have a good soldering iron there are different kind of soldering irons you have the portable ones like this one which is a very good one ts100 or something like that and there are soldering iron stations that are for the bench that are much faster and I don't know, it gives you a certain level of you have something there that is going to work very long. When you have portables like this one, you normally have, you need an external power supply like a power bank or a battery, like a drone lipo battery that works as well here. And when you have a station that's connected to your current on your house the whole time and you don't need to think about how are you going to turn it on. And if you have, for example, again, if you have this one and you're powering for, with a 4S, it's going to be slower than if you're powering with a 6S. That's not going to happen with a power with a soldering station. In my case, when I started with FPV, I bought a cheap soldering station and it was working. It did the work. I could make my, my drones fly. But here's the thing. After a while that I was working and I seen that a lot of people were recommending some other soldering stations i went and i bought something that was a little bit better something that uh, felt like more proper soldering station and the difference was huge the difference how fast you warm you heat that soldering the the way that it just flow it's it's amazing so if you are into this hobby don't chip out on the soldering iron that you're gonna have it's gonna make your job so much nicer to have something that is good quality and that it works believe me go ahead and get yourself something good and you will see that your whole bench work is going to be in another level When you start getting serious about working on the bench and soldering, you're going to spend a lot of hours doing this work. And when you're soldering, even if you are in a, a, an environment that is open and that it has airflow, those fumes are going to get into you and it's not that good for you. It's not, I, I, in the beginning when I didn't have a tool for this, I got some headaches here and there. And it's a, it's a test, it's a show that it's nothing good for you. That's why having a fume structure is something that I believe that it's good for you if you are spending some time working on your drones. I would say there are many fume structures that you can buy, and, but normally the ones that you find on the internet, on the shops, they are big and they are like more professional or something like if you are soldering a lot, a lot, a lot. But if you are in the hobby and you do it this, you know, time to time, you don't need something huge. You don't need something that is going to be the half of your room, but it's good to have like a fan with some kind of filtering that moves that air from the soldering wire away from your lungs. And that's why in my case, I created my own or I just use a computer fan and I put it on a case that I, that I designed myself with some filtering and this is actually helping with those headaches that I was mentioning before. This is something that even if you don't believe it that much, I'm telling you, it, it makes a difference for me. So now every time that I'm, I know that I'm gonna solder, I just take this. Actually, something that is pretty cool from this one that I made is that it's driven by batteries. So I just take it, put it in front of me, turn it on, and I have my fume structure close to me without having to think about moving a lot of cables or having such a big thing going around. And it's helping my health. I think this is a must have also if you are doing more than the one in a time soldering. Keeping myself in the fan area, 
When you are working with drones, I don't know if you have noticed how hot, how warm does the VTX get? Especially those ones digital, they get super warm. And the number one recommendation that you will hear all the time is that if you are working on the bench with your drone and you are going to have that VTX on, you should have some kind of fan on top of it. There are hundreds of USB fans which are very cheap on the internet. I would recommend you to get any of those ones. Normally they are USB, you plug it and you have it and you put it on your drone when you are updating or you are troubleshooting or anything just to make sure that you're not gonna have a problem with the VTX and it's not gonna overheat. Again here, I was playing around with things that I had at home and I did this little design for a, for a VTX fan, if you wanna put a name of this. It's just an 80 millimeters fan inside here connected to a USB C port. I connected to a, a, a power supply, a USB power supply or my computer. I turn it on and I can leave that working with my drone so I avoid any kind of overheating. This one, having one small fan like this, USB fan, I believe that is something that anyone working with drones should have because again, unless you are disconnecting the VTX when you're working on your drone, that thing is gonna get hot and you have the probability of burning it down or damaging because they are designed to have airflow all the time. The last one in the must have list, I'm going to say that is the multimeter. You don't need a super fancy, super expensive multimeter that can do 100,000 different things, but you do need something that is going to help you troubleshoot your drones and nothing better than a multimeter. With the multimeter, you can see continuity. That's the first thing or the thing that I use the most of the, of the tool is when you wanna check that a cable is connected from one point to the other, you touch here, you touch there, and if it beeps, that means that that cable is connected to both ends. That's gonna help you with finding out if you did a, a good connection, and it's gonna help you finding out if you have a short circuit where you shouldn't have. So for example, if you get, and you put the, the, the continuity test between the power and the ground and it beeps, it means that you have a short circuit. Before you connect your battery, you can know this, you can check and get rid of it. So it's a must, in my opinion, to have it. Do a checkup of your drones every time that you're soldering. You put one cable, you check with the continuity and see if there is any kind of short circuit. It's gonna help you a lot. And also with the voltimeter, you can see, for example, if the receiver is getting the five volts that it should be getting, or the VTX is getting the nine or the 12 volt that it's supposed to be getting. That's gonna help you troubleshoot if you have a problem with your drone. So again, this is another one that is on the top of my list. It's something that you don't need to have a very expensive one. I think this I bought from AliExpress for nothing, like $10 or something like that. You can choose very cheap ones and it's going to work for what you need. You don't need anything super advanced for this, in, in this case of drone building and fixing. I could name many other tools, like tools to measure screws or to cut the cables or just to be able to manage those cables when you are working on the bench. But the list that I just gave you, those ones are the ones that I believe are the top ones for me. Without them, it's difficult for me to start the work on my drones. I normally have my bench. I'm, I make sure that those tools are on the top and easy accessible for me. And I think it's what makes this experience of fixing and building drones so much fun. This is what I have for you today. I hope that you see something interesting and that you have some ideas of what you want to have on your bench uh, if you're gonna be working a lot on the drones. If you found something interesting that is not here, let me know in the comments again, please. It's very appreciated when you give me this information because it works for me to do new videos in the future. Thank you for watching and see you soon.